This tutorial will show you how to use the control panel for the RWSL absorbance spectrometer. When the control panel first starts, you will see a screen that looks like this. On the left side are the controls for the spectrometer, while on the right side is a video panel and controls for the external camera that allow you to see what's going on in the lab. When you first log into the remote lab, you may have to scroll down to see it, but there will be a yellow button that says voice conference. Click this to get information on how to join the voice conference. In this particular case, there is a link that you can use to get to the GoToMeeting site that is used for the voice conference. And once you've installed a small piece of software, you'll be able to use either your telephone to call the number shown on the screen or to use your computer microphone and speakers to talk with your lab partners and with the lab techs who are in the lab to assist you. If you need additional assistance or can't join the voice conference for some reason, there will be an email address on the screen and you can contact the lab technicians by emailing them at that address. The first thing you want to do is to take control of the interface by right-clicking anywhere on the screen and selecting Request Control of VI. Now you want to start the data feed from the spectrometer. You first want to store the dark spectrum, which is just the background of noise. Then turn on the spectrometer's light source and you'll see the spectrum of visible light. Notice that the spectrum is fairly noisy at this point. You can adjust parameters like the boxcar width and the number of spectra to average in order to get a cleaner signal. To manipulate the spectrum, use these controls in the lower right hand corner of the spectrum. The center button allows you to zoom all the way out to view the entire spectrum or select a portion of the spectrum to inspect more closely. If you make a mistake you can always zoom back out. The other tools in this array are not particularly useful for our purposes. On the left side of this is the cursor control button. If you enable the cursor, then you can drag it anywhere on the spectrum and the location of the cursor will correspond to the wavelength and the intensity that is shown in the cursor location information. You can also export this image to your clipboard and then paste it into a Word document, for example. If you want to look around the lab, you have full control over the camera that is viewing the experimental setup. You can zoom in and out and look at anything that you wish in the lab. Before you take any absorbance measurements, you'll want to make sure that everything is set up properly with the cuvettes and the samples. You need to turn on the temperature controller to make sure that everything is at the right temperature for your experiment whatever that happens to be. It may take a while for the temperature to, to equilibrate, but you can watch it either on the control panel or on the video showing the actual temperature controller device. If your procedure tells you to do so, you may need to turn on the stirring control, and this will keep the solutions in the cuvettes mixed properly. But if you don't need the stirring control, you don't need to turn it on. Clicking over 
to the next tab allows you to select which of the six cuvettes is in the beam of the light. And you can watch this on the video as well. If there are pumps available to deliver liquids into the cuvettes, the controls will be visible on this screen in these locations. And you'll be able to select how much you want to put into the cuvette, and the current volume of the cuvette will be reflected in this graphic. If there are pumps available, the controls will look like this. You'll have a drop-down list from which you can select from up to six different pumps if they are connected. If you select an operational pump, this field will be updated to show what's in it. If you select a non-functional pump, you will be warned that it is not functional and you need to select another one. After you select a functional pump and make sure it's what you want, you can change the volume to add. If there's no room in the cuvette, you will receive a warning that you can't add that volume. So, let's select another cuvette that has room in it. You can see that this one has some space and can have some extra volume added. You can use the up and down arrows or simply type in the volume you want into this field. Once you've selected the appropriate volume based on your laboratory procedure, just click the Add button and the volume will be added to the cuvette. This field will update to show the current volume both digitally and graphically. There is also a temperature ramping capability available which allows you to set up to six different set points and how long to stay at each set point. And once you start that procedure, you will have a temperature profile that it ramps through. But again, if you don't need it, don't turn it on. After the temperature has been stable for a couple of minutes, you'll want to go display the absorbance curve by clicking on this button. Once you've turned on the absorbance, you'll need to zoom out on the spectrum in order to see the details. Since we're still on the reference cuvette, the absorbance is a flat line. But if we click over to the QPod tab and change samples, we'll see an absorbance peak where the light is being absorbed. Turning on the cursor and placing it on top of the absorbance peak will allow us to see some more details about it. And if we wish, we can zoom in on that peak and make sure that we're really uh, right in the middle of it. Then the absorbance and the wavelength of that absorbance peak will be displayed here. If you're doing an experiment where the absorbance curve will be changing over time, you can use the value log tab to record that changing data. You can set the amount of time to collect data and the interval between data points with these two controls. And the data will be collected from wherever the cursor is currently located. Once you've set the parameters, you can click Start to begin collecting data. The data points will be populated into the table until the end of the specified time period that you have set or until you click the stop button to stop collection. You can clear the data with this button. If you wish to save the data, you can export it into your clipboard and paste it into a spreadsheet just as you did before with the graph. But make sure that you and your lab partners have saved the data before you clear it.